I wouldn't call it protest music in, in any way, but you kind of paint pictures of these situations of lives and, and things that have been and kind of reveal in a way, okay, this is how some people are living and look at, look at these, these horrible conditions these or something. circumstances. Yeah, I think a lot of people over the years have mislabeled me as a political songwriter because mm. I always thought of myself as someone making social commentary. Right. Just describing the conditions that people live and often I'm examining power structures, whether it's interpersonal power structures or even in 10,000 Maniacs when I wrote a song like Poison in the Well, I was talking about the disregard that corporations have for the environment and the well-being of the people who have to live around these really dangerous, especially chemical works. Mm. So rather than write a song that is very didactic and kind of mm. like, oh, the companies don't care about the people and people's rights, I decided to write about a family who just turn on their tap and there's no water. And when they investigate, they ask, why, what's happened to our water? they're told that there's been a spill of some sort, there's been contamination. But everything's under control. And we see it happening all the time now. Um, I grew up near Niagara Falls, not far, sure. 60 miles away. And uh, there was a, a whole town built on top of a chemical dump. And suddenly there was an unusual amount of stillbirths or women unable to conceive children, and then childhood leukemia. And it came out that this Hooker Chemicals, was the name of the company, had been bearing dioxin, and then went out, of, you know, just sort of left the area, but, you know, buried it all, covered it all up, and then they built a school on top of it. You know, the epicenter of the dump, they built the public school on top of it. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and now there's, like, municipality after municipality is finding out that their water is contaminated. 